why are you wearing your winter coat inside your house? The answer to that is because last night and today, Los Angeles got a pretty strong rainstorm with like pretty high winds and there's thunder. And it knocked out my power last night a few times, like four times, it kept going on and off. And then at maybe like 10 or 11 p.m., that's when it just like went out. I thought when I woke up that it would be back on, but no, it's not. It's 4 o'clock p.m. Tonight we'll be going on the 24 hour mark for not having power. And I wanted to film this before the sun went down. So I've been cleaning, <laughs> cleaning my house, organizing things, putting things away. And now I'm like, what do I do? Because my phone is dead. My Wi-Fi isn't working. I have no way of communicating with anyone. Um, I'm here by myself, of course, because I live alone. Um, so really all I can do right now <laughs> is either clean or make a video for you guys. So today, it's not going to be a try-on haul. It's too cold in here for that. Um, <laughs> I wanted to do that today, but I'm like, I can't even like get naked right now because I'm freezing, like, I am have my winter jacket on. I haven't really gone through this before. Um, at one of the apartments I used to live at, our landlord didn't pay the heat bill, and then our heat got shut off for like three days in a row, and this was when I lived in Massachusetts, so it was like 20 degrees out and we didn't have heat for three days. So that was not fun, however, we had power though, so we were able to plug in like a space heater. Um, I do not have power, so there is absolutely no source of heat other than a couple of candles that I lit. But yeah, this is probably the most intense kind of thing weather-wise that's happened to me since I've lived in Los Angeles, other than like there was a really mild earthquake probably like a month ago. It was a like 4.2 magnitude, and I felt my house shake, but it wasn't bad. So, I thought I would talk about a past experience that you guys might be interested in hearing about. Back when I lived in South Carolina, I lived on the Fort Jackson Army Base, and I was dating a guy who had to be there for training for three months, um, so I pretty much just like packed my whole life up and went with him, and... I didn't have a job. Um, so I was like, hmm, I could work at a restaurant. But I was kind of over the whole restaurant thing. I wanted to try something new. So I decided to <laughs> apply to Hooters, which I honestly never thought I would do. Um, I have, my, my breasts are 32B. Um, they're not considered Hooters. I don't have those, but I was like, you know what? Why don't I just apply? Like, what if, um, what if the manager is like, we like her, let's get her on the team. So I applied to Hooters and then within like a couple of days, I remember this exact moment actually, I was laying in the bathtub, just like relaxing and then I get a call and it's uh, the manager from Hooters. He's like, oh, we'd love to have you come in for an interview. And I was like, oh. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I was really nervous. I went for my interview. The manager was super cool, like the general manager. He didn't ask me like any questions about like my skills. Um, he did, I guess he just wanted to see me in person and like see what my personality was like. And he's like, yeah, we'd love to have you uh, start next week. Um, so I was like, oh, cool. So I have a job. Nice. I was like, this is great. I'm gonna, I went into this being like, I'm gonna make so much money and it's just gonna be amazing and it's gonna be an experience to explore different parts of myself because years ago, like I said, I never thought that I would be a Hooters waitress. I used to be a very modest person, but I've learned a lot about myself and I'm not a modest person at all. So <laughs> I keep growing, but Anyway, I started training 
Um, I had to like learn the menu. I had to do all these like things on an iPad to like learn all the different protocols. And I mean, I've like served in restaurants, so I know how to like wait a table. I started working in a restaurant when I was 16 and I stopped when I was 25. So it was about nine years of restaurant experience. So that part was easy. However, the experience was very disappointing. <laughs> Not because of like the job itself, because like I said, I've worked in restaurants. I know what I'm doing. I'm really good at it. I always would make tons of money at all the other restaurants I worked at. Um, however, this Hooters for some reason was just like an anomaly. I don't know. I was trained by this woman who seemed to really not like me for some reason. She wasn't very nice. She wasn't very helpful. Um, she was very competitive. And she kind of just was like, okay, I'm training you, so go do my job for me. And I was, it just like felt weird. Um, she's kind of just standing around doing nothing and having me like do all the work for her. So she was the one that trained me pretty much the whole week. So I was having an awful time. Like the, the way that she would talk to me was very condescending and she treated me like I was really stupid and I mean, I was new, so I was like, I don't know like where anything is, so you're gonna have to show me. Um, <laughs> I don't think she was meant for training. She's not the most friendly person. She was also late a lot. Like I'd just be sitting around waiting and I would end up doing like all the opening duties and she'd get there and like, she'd be like, okay, I'm ready to take a table. And I'm like, you didn't, you didn't help at all. You're supposed to be here like a half hour ago. And I tried my best to, to like ignore this person, but she's just like not a great person, not a great human being to like work with at least. I don't know what she's like outside of work, who knows, but another thing, the general manager that hired me was busy doing things in other um, restaurants, like I think he was in Savannah, Georgia helping out there. So he had like a fill-in supervisor, I guess you'd call her. And also, like, same thing with the person that was training me. She, the supervisor, she was very dismissive, not helpful at all, um, was rude. Um, whenever I needed help, like, I, I didn't know how to use something on the computer system. So um, I went into the office and I was like, hey, can I get some help with this, please? And she'd be like scrolling on social media and she'd like look back and be like, <sighs> like I saw her roll her eyes at me. <laughs> She's like, I guess so. And she like put her phone down and came and helped me. But yeah, that like it just wasn't like a warm and welcoming community there. Um, <laughs> still, I was holding on. I was like, this could get better. Let's, we'll see. So the third thing, there was like a lot of cool people that came in and like we'd have cool conversations, but there were a lot of customers that were just not very great. Not the ideal um, restaurant client, if that's what you'd call them. A lot of them would tip like maybe 5% on the bill versus when I'd work at just a regular restaurant, it'd be like 20% or more, mostly on like every table. So that was a bit shocking for me. I'm like, but I'm working at Hooters. I should be making more money. That was not the case. I was making less money than I did at like an everyday restaurant that you'd walk into. So I did not enjoy the clientele. Um, another thing, the girls that worked there for like a longer period of time would um they'd get like their regulars that would come in every like friday or every couple of days they'd come in um and the girls like we'd have rotation where like a table came in this waitress or the server got it and then another one would come in and the other server would get it and it'd be like we just rotate a lot of the girls would be like oh no that's my regulars um so that's my table and i'd be like i didn't know that we could do that they would never let their regulars have a different waitress. Like, that was like a no-no. Um, but 
a lot of the girls regulars would call me over and be like who are you like I want to talk to you like but and then the girls would see that and they'd be like getting all jealous like oh my regulars are talking to a new waitress it was just like a lot of competition um the girls weren't nice to each other I really like kind of put up armor and like hid in a shell because I was like this sucks like I don't want to be around these people I'm just trying to get out of here so I like wouldn't socialize with any of them because I'm like this isn't worth it um, I guess the last thing that I can complain about <laughs> this sounds like a video of me just complaining but I just wanted to be honest about my experience working there it was very short-lived for a reason. The last thing I will complain about are the uniforms. I didn't mind how revealing they were. Like I said, I'm not a super modest gal anymore, as you can tell. Versus right now, I'm very, I'm very modest because I'm cold. Um, <laughs> but they gave me a uniform that was like two sizes too small for me um, because they didn't have my correct size. And they're like, oh, well. You're just gonna have to wear it. I don't, they're like, we don't have any other sizes. I'm like, okay. So the outfits are meant to like squeeze you in and like push you up. And I, I, get, I get that. Like a size that actually would fit me, it would make sense. But a size that's way too small for me, like my arms were like bulging out of it. I was like losing my circulation. I was very uncomfortable all day. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Like I was just like, all day <laughs> so there's that too yeah I I remember the last day that I worked there I was there for a seven or eight hour shift the woman that trained me was not being nice it was a different supervisor the woman who was rolling her eyes at me and I left the restaurant with eighty dollars in tips from an eight hour work day which I used to make like $8 an hour when I was 16 because it was 2012 at that time and that's what minimum wage was. Um, but making $10 an hour as like a full grown adult working out of Hooters, that didn't sit right with me. So I get home and I'm with my boyfriend at the time and in the bathroom, washing my makeup off, getting ready for us to go to dinner. And I remember he was like, he was standing behind me because I was really upset. I was like, I had such a bad day at work. Like I can't do this anymore. And I just absolutely started breaking down crying. And it was like, it was so uncontrollable. I just needed to like let it out. And he hugged me and he made me feel better. But he was like, you know, you don't have to go back. And I'm like, yeah, I know I'm not. <laughs> so. I called the manager and I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. It's just not a good environment for me. So yeah, I ended up quitting within a week. If I gave it a rating out of 10, it would be a two out of 10. <laughs> and after I quit that, I got a different job. Um, I had a social media job and then I also worked at a coffee place for like a short amount of time before I left. South Carolina. That's my honest experience about working there. Do I regret it? No. I don't regret it. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. I just wanted to share a little, a little more about my life with you. And it just makes more sense because I am, um, I don't really have anything else to do today. So, <laughs> and I have to be all bundled up in my coat. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will be back shortly for more try on hauls, of course, and more videos of me talking about my experiences and just random fun videos, maybe some vlogs. I hope you enjoy whatever time of day it is. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna be able to post this because I don't know when I'm gonna get power back and Wi-Fi. So let's hope that it's tonight at least. All right, thank you for listening. Um, thank you for liking, subscribing, commenting. If you find my OnlyFans and you subscribe there, I love you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.